Neil Craig Hamilton with you for the hour. What is going to happen with the Newcastle District Cricket Association season with the the city still in lockdown and we don't know when we're coming out of lockdown? Cricket season just around the corner. Paul Marjorie Banks, Chairman, Newcastle District Cricket Associ- Association with us now. Paul, good morning. Uh, good day, Craig. So what is happening? Are you going to be able to go ahead? Uh, mate, more questions than answers at the moment. The short answer is no, we don't have a, an official date. Um, I think government health orders are what we're waiting on. Uh, as you mentioned, the end of the lockdown, uh, what that date will be, but I guess more importantly, when can team sports start up again after that? I think mentioned earlier in the in the morning, um, even areas like Tamworth, Dungog, North Coast, which are out of lockdown, still can't play team sport at the moment. Um, and I think the second part to the health order is the, the, the vaccination status. Um, it's pretty clear the narrative of the government, whether it be workplace, retail, pubs, clubs, whatever, is the vaccinated people will have more freedom. So um, Cricket New South Wales has certainly been on the front foot with the government trying to, um, I guess, get some dates for junior cricket and, and then senior cricket um, and this vaccination. They're obviously supporting the government's message with vaccination, be it uh, participation or filling the SCG. Um, they've alerted all the associations and clubs that that's likely to be the, the scenario. So, uh, yeah, so we're just getting ourselves in order. We've um, locally, we've, uh, we've we've looked at November 6th as a possible starting date. That still gives us plenty of time to run a pretty decent season. Obviously, the, yeah, as that goes further back, that impacts on, on how the season could look. Helen, you got a question for Paul? Yeah, first of all, Paul, congratulations on your life membership with um, NDCA, awarded to you through the week. Well done. Great yeah, thank you, Helen. Yeah, 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 very proud of that. Yeah, well deserved. Um, in terms of what will it do for the role of volunteers, just say the government says, well, when we come back to community sport, we need to be all double vaxxed. You know, that's going to put a lot of pressure on someone in the volunteer ranks, isn't it, to either check uh, phones, certificates or whatever, and also on the players themselves who want to play the game. But have yeah yeah the, com- the the compliant the yeah the compliance side is really big in this it's not just flick a switch and it can happen mm. um obviously we've got a, a play my cricket our our player um, registration and our our player management tool and there is enhancements going into that to have players vaccination status uh, we've had the QR codes at grounds which obviously work very well if you're playing at Harker or Townsend or or, or one at Waratah but when you get yeah. out of out of parks it becomes more difficult so. That's all in the fine print, how the compliance work. And it's not black and white. But the talks Cricket New South Wales are having with the government is really... Because um, there's supply issues with vaccination for under 35s in some areas as well. So it really is... I, I don't think I just say flick a switch and it all happens, but it's how can we get back to cricket safely? There are people with health reasons uh, that can't be vaccinated as well without getting into the whole argument. About vaccination It's a big area. So... There's a lot of talk going on, and we hope we get some pretty pretty clear advice on how that can work. Yeah, and that will impact on the representative program, no doubt, the country championships that you know so many people long to watch um, around the January period. So your rep season could maybe just put on be put on a little bit of hold this year, could it? Because of yeah, you know, just hold or through. postponed. Yeah, it's yeah, um, yeah. it's. The Australian Country Champs, which are normally held in January, they've already been pushed back to probably April. Um, So that gives us a bit of chance now to maybe push some of our rep programs back. Yeah, it's really a a moving beast at the moment. It's it's, 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 nothing's locked in, but uh, everything's possible. Uh, Baz, you got a question there for Paul? Yeah, Paul, what about contingency plans in and around how long your competition can go and, and maybe limiting the number of two-day games to fit uh, more more games in. Is, are you already looking at that? Is, have you got contingency plans in place for when, you know, when maybe your competition will start, if it doesn't start in early November, if it's pushed back even further than that? Yeah, Barry, that's what we've been working on pretty much the last bit of, like, various scenarios, um, depending how many Saturdays we have. So if we can get started in, in, in November... Uh, we're pretty confident we can do a pretty good mix of two day, one day, everybody playing each other uh, during the season. It might involve the odd Saturday, Sunday, two day game. Um, I guess worst case, pushing the season. Helen won't like this into maybe a bit of football season. Ooh, so no, no, no. that <laughs> that we've all been through this. So that we certainly yeah. have a couple of scenarios in place. 
But then it goes, I mean, we are the largest association in New South Wales, so we've got our lower grades, our suburban district one day comp, we've got an ever growing women's competition, Masters cricket, the under 21s. This year we're going to launch an under 16s um, grade competition with the SG Moore Shield in honouring Simon for, for his services. I mean, to cricket in Newcastle. Um, so it's it's not just the top grades. There's a whole lot of stuff going on underneath, and everything gets impacted. The more the more weeks we lose, we've got, either got to juggle or something may well um, be a casualty for the season. So, yeah, a lot happening with our management committee and our fixtures committee with with, with planning and uh, different scenarios. Well, let's hope you can get it. Um, yeah, let's hope we can come out of this and and uh, we can get it underway. Yeah, thanks, Bass. And Paul, uh, if I could add my um, congratulations too to Helen's comment about your life membership through the week that was announced for the NDCA. Well done. They don't give those away. They don't just chuck them around. You've got to be, you've got to be pretty special and have made a huge contribution to be granted life membership. So well done. Appreciate that, Craig. Thank you very much. Paul Marjorie Banks uh, joining us on the program from the NDCA. It's twelve to ten.